Welcome back, everybody, for another episode of the Wednesday Watch List. This is my weekly look ahead to the new comics coming out this new comic book Wednesday, July 10th, 2024. So this is my rundown of all the books that might be already selling for a premium, some of the incentives coming out, variants, uh, some secret announcements if there are any, spoiler covers, uh, that sort of thing. So hopefully you're enjoying this everything here on the channel please let me know what you think in the comments down below make sure you like you subscribe you hit the alert button so you don't miss anything you keep telling your friends so we can keep growing the channel and while you're at it please go over and check out my new toy channel as well toy informer um i've been building this out just from the bottom up just getting it out and started from scratch only got a little bit of content started so far but if you like toys you like collectibles go give it a try i've got some news items as well as some top 10 toys uh, first one was on G.I. Joe Classified. I got another one coming later this week. So go give the toy channel a look if you're down for toys. With that all said, if you just want to see the comics this week, that's fine. I got you covered there too. But before we get there, if you haven't given Whatnot a try, make sure you use the link down below because you get a free $15 to buy whatever you want from whomever you want. No strings attached. 15 bucks for first time users. You'll help the channel and you can get yourself something nice with that 15 bucks with nothing else. You know, no, like I said, no strings attached. Uh, and with that all said, let's get into the books right after the intro, okay? All right, so this week is a little bit heftier than, than we had last week. Last week was a bit of a stretch. I didn't even have a reading segment section last week, and this week it's come back with a vengeance. So my wallet's going to be hurting. My wallet's going to be hurting. So uh, with that all said, let's just get this thing started and uh, get right into my personal picks. So these are the things that are at the top of my list, top of the pile, I'm looking forward to and want to check out, curious about, and again, by now, I might as well just start this as the Energon Universe Fan Club because it is one of my favorite things running right now, as you can tell by my hat and uh, one of the toys and things behind me. Transformers, G.I. Joe, that's my wheelhouse. So Transformers Issue 10 is coming out this week. A cover, there's also a B cover for you to get, you know, if you want that one as well. And then a few variants, uh, as per usual. We get the normal 1 in 10, 1 in 25, and 1 in 50 if you want to get those. Uh, none of these are trading above ratio, so you can get them for ratio or less. Most cases, uh, a lot less. You can get like the 1 in 50, for instance, for like 40 bucks. You could probably get the 1 in 25 for 15 to 20, uh, depending on where you look. And the 1 in 10 is part of that connecting cover set, as we've been talking about for all of the Skybound stuff. The 1 in 10s, they've been connecting. So this one, no stranger connecting up with the prior three issues. So issue seven, eight, nine, and now 10, forming this larger mural type image, which is pretty cool. I always like this kind of stuff. So uh, that's a fun little uh, a fun little extra that you get with the one in tens. Now, no one but me will probably care about this next book, but as you know, I am also a big Silver Surfer fan. So I am looking forward to new Silver Surfer material, even if it is only a giant size special here. So giant size 50th for Silver Surfer. It's going back to like that time frame with like uh, Morg and I think Terax. So a uh, fun little throwback story. Couple of covers here. Nothing uh, that you have to go and chase or worry about incentive wise. Uh, all of these are open order. Pick the one that you like. And uh, yeah, if you just like Surfer like me, this will be an interesting. Uh, just a little pickup this week. Sub something a little fun, something a little extra. Next up, seems like it's been forever. At least to me, how long has it been since we've talked about Kid Venom? I know most people don't care about Kid Venom, but I actually kind of like the character a little bit. It doesn't seem like Venom-like at all. It seems almost like a Jap Japanese samurai story, which I'm down for that kind of stuff. So uh, you're just mixing in the Venom symbiote with it. I'm kind of interested. Call me crazy, but I'm kind of interested to see where they go with this thing. But after the teases and the one shots and all that, we're finally getting the series coming this week. So here we got cover A. And as you might guess, we're getting a bunch of other covers here, including a nice little homage throwback there on uh, this one, which actually in issue two of Lethal Protector, but still pretty well done homage. Uh, you know, so even get, gives the little notes down below. Yeah, I think it's after Bagley. So Philip Tan, not bad. I dig it. 
Again, other options here as well. You got negative space cover. You got Inhale Glee there in the middle. There's a foil as well if you want the foil. And there's even incentives if you want. So a lot of cover options as per usual with Marvel. Uh, there's a 1 in 25 by a Potatio. And then there's that Virgin for the Inhale Glee is the 1 in 100. Check the prices on these. They're trading right around ratio. The 1 in 100s, a couple listed like 110, 120 maybe. But basically it's right around 100 bucks or even a little less. So if you want any of these, you could probably find them for ratio or less if you go and look in the right places. So uh, no, uh, there's not a lot of pre-sale action on these just yet. We'll still keep an eye on them. That's what the watch list is all about. Just because pre-sales aren't happening doesn't mean this won't get hot or vice versa. Just because there's a couple of high pre-sales doesn't mean the book's going to end up being hot. It is fun to keep an eye on all these things. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. And then finally, you guys knew I was going to get this. X-Men is like the other big ticket thing I have here in my collection, uh, right up there with Surfer and G.I. Joe Transformers. X-Men is right there. So with that said, a new number one for X-Men from the ashes, a new beginning. I'm curious, always happy to see a new restart, especially after the last, the last run kind of felt like it was dragging on a while. So I'm ready for a fresh start. Don't know if I'm going to love everything that they make, but I'm open. I'm being open-minded and I'll give it all a try. Issue one of this book comes with, as you might guess, multiple covers. Uh, there was a tease last week, so I read it for a few pages of this. Not too bad. We'll see where it goes. Uh, Negative Space, John Tyler Christopher Magic cover. Obviously, Magic is also on the Peach Momoko cover, if you want that one. There is also a Scotty Young, obviously, because Scotty Young always does a cover for issue ones, and there is a blank, and there is the dreaded logo cover. I mean, it's just another blank, basically. I just, I don't know. I don't like the logo covers. I think it's dumb. Just, I don't know. It seems like a waste. Like, save that for, like, the collected edition or, the, you know, the hardcover. When you take off the, you know, the dust jacket, that's what you have underneath. This doesn't belong on the front of a comic. Like, I'd rather pay for cover art, personally. But, eh, whatever. I get it. If you want to go for signatures, this could be a cool option. There's a lot of room, you know, for to add signatures, etc., or sketches or remarks. Sure. But, again, you already got the blank for that. We don't need two, do we? But whatever. I'm not done yet. Still more, still more covers. We have part of that big mural of all the mutant characters uh, coming. This will be spread across these new X titles. So uh, this is part of it here. Uh, and then we also have the Campbell cover, as well as uh, another option right there for you. I forget who did that last one. But uh, it's Tony Daniel, I think. That might be Tony Daniel on that one. But with the incentives, there are only two. Luckily for us, there are only two. There's a 1 in 25 hidden gem by George Perez giving us a beast, and then they just took the Campbell, stripped it of the trade dress that was behind her, and it's sort of a virgin version uh, for a 1 in 100. This one, since it's a Campbell, obviously, you know, we got to keep an eye on it because it's probably trading for a little bit more, and so far, yeah, a little bit more. Not a ton more. Early pre-sales, 120 to 130. Asking prices, kind of in that 130 to 140 range right now. Will it hold there? Will it go up from there? Will it drop? Who knows? That's why we're going to watch it. But it's worth keeping an eye on. You know, there's a tons of exclusives on this cover, so there's going to be tons of this incentive out there available to all of those exclusive sellers as well. So I don't expect this one to be that hard to find. It's a cool cover, but I don't think it'll be that tough to track down if you want to pay those extra bucks for it. With that said... Blood Hunt is almost over, so we're going to keep it here near the top of the show because, again, I know not everybody's loving it, but I'm still kind of enjoying it. I don't know. It's not great. It's not breaking, you know, breaking new ground, really, but it's kind of just a fun vampire story. It's kind of a fun event for the summer. I don't know. I'm kind of into it. That's all. Uh, and this week, we have no main title to kind of wrap up. We only got the one issue left, but we do have some, uh, some tie-ins and some uh, other one-shots. Uh, dropping as well starting off with avengers so the regular avengers title is uh come on here we go here we go issue 16 um still tying in you got baron blood back there you know, a bunch of the avengers uh then there's also another cover that is unrelated to blood hunt for whatever reason they decided to just throw all these uh younger you know the younger characters in there and just kind of make it seem like it's unrelated to blood hunt but it's tying in i don't know whatever reason that's the that's a variant cover. There's another variant cover we'll get to in a later segment, but for now, those are your two options for Avengers 16. 
Uh, the miniseries for Union Jack the Ripper is wrapping up with issue three of three. So looking forward to this. I want to give this a read to see how this story finishes. There's an A cover as well as a B cover here. And uh, get the one that you like. And uh, yeah, so like I said, looking forward to this. Also getting the wrap up of Wolverine's miniseries for Blood Hunt. And uh, if you want to get that third part, it is available here with cover A or a cover B here as well. So, again, pick your poison, whichever one you like better. Also, even though we're near the end of this whole thing, we still got a couple of uh, little extras coming out like this. Hulk. So, the Incredible Hulk Blood Hunt 1. So, we're getting a one-shot for whatever reason this late in the game. But Hulk, you see all the little, I like the little vampire teeth. See all the little marks, and he's just dripping, uh, just dripping his green gamma blood from there. Pretty cool cover, uh, actually, for the cover A. And uh, there's also a nice homage throwback here with um, another B cover. And we have that Saturday morning cartoon variant that I showed you last week. It's kind of a teaser. Uh, it goes with that Werewolf by Night one shot that came out, like I said, just last week. So last week you get that one. You can connect it with the Hulk here to get your little connecting cover set. And there is also a 1 in 25 if you want your incentive for this book. So uh, there you go. There's an incentive. And... It's not doing a lot, but it's doing a little bit on the pre-sale market. So this one in 25, right around ratio, up to 35 bucks. Asking prices right now, not a lot listed, but they're looking for around 35 up to as high as 60 bucks for this one in 25. Again, where it will go, I don't know, but I just figured it was worth noting for now that that's what, uh, what's been going on so far. And with that, there are also a couple of later prints. So uh, we're going to get right into later prints early again because... Just like last week and the week before, we are getting a couple of more of these Blood Hunt second prints just to kind of help uh, keep this story in going. So Black Panther number one of three. Boom, there's your second print. Uh, Midnight Suns also with the red wash, you know, on the cover. Second print there for that issue one as well. I don't know if all the other titles or the other issues are going to get second prints, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Uh, that said, this, I don't know if I'm going to say it right, Akugan series. Pretty cool. Second printer in issue one, and now there's a second printer in issue two. So it seems to be doing pretty well for Oni. So go give it a look. See, I haven't checked this out yet. I probably should just go and grab this and give this thing a read. If this is good, please let me know in the comments down below because I'm interested. I'm intrigued by this. You know, always intrigued by like those battle of the gods type stories. I don't know. Mythology has always been a you know, fun little, uh, you know, fun little thing that I'm interested in. But uh, yeah, let me know. Let me know if this is any good if you've read it. Uh, otherwise, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna. Think about it, but eventually, I'll, maybe I'll take a, I'll dip my toe into, into the waters and see what the book's like eventually. But uh, if I need to do it sooner rather than later, like I said, let me know uh, down below. The book that I don't know much about, I know it's a cult game, and a lot of you were jumping in and uh, getting that issue one. But issue uh, one is getting that second print for Cult of the Lamb. We are also getting issue two this week. Uh, for this same series, but I don't think I have it in the rest of the deck because, again, I don't know much about this series, and uh, yeah, it's just not in my wheelhouse. But we are getting a second print for issue one if you missed it. But going back to my wheelhouse, Skybound ain't ain't shy about giving us later prints. They're definitely not shy about that. So here we go. Pretty cool cover. I think uh, Dub had this on tack a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I don't know. It's creepy with the extra eyeball way up there on the top of the head. But fourth print on Cobra Commander 1. Pretty cool cover. I dig it. Uh, this is Miko Sion, I think. I like it. Also, third print for Duke on issue three. Pretty, pretty cool Baroness cover. Kind of reminds me of that Black Widow. Uh, you know, the one there's like a white uh, white suit variant as well. Uh, Deadly something. I can't remember. I can't remember the title of it. Yeah, I know you guys know what I'm talking about. But point being, pretty awesome Duke cover here. Also, these, this has to be it. This has to be the last printings for these two has to be, but we are getting a ninth printing for issue one of void rivals ninth print. And this is a connecting cover with the seventh print for transformers one. Ninth and seventh Jesus. But as I mentioned, you, you can see it. These two go together here. Boom. So we got Unicron on the back. Uh, a lot of fun stuff. Cool. I like this. I like the detail here. And if you really want to get a better look at the detail, these are the color versions of these cover. They do have black and white sketch versions. It, it's hard to 
it's hard to read at a distance, but when you look in, you can see the fine lines and detail work uh, when you look at it closer. But at a distance, it does look busy as hell. But it is pretty cool and a pretty cool option if you want to see that uh, detailed pencil work. Uh, so there you go. Connecting covers on the ninth and seventh printing for Void Rivals and Transformer ones. Whew. I don't know why they need so many printings. I mean, who hasn't read it by now? That said, X Men ninety seven issue two third print. Pretty, I kind of like this. <laughs> Just VHS boxes for the old, for you know, for the things. I don't know. I remember VHS tapes. This kind of hits me in the nostalgia feels a little bit. So uh, yeah. Fun cover on the third print for issue two. Uh, the second print for issue two was that Gambit and Rogue cover that did pretty well. It's, you know, so what happened in the episode uh, that came out like near that time. But there was also a uh, second print for the next issue, issue three, uh, coming out this week as well, which is more of a classic team up kind of look there. So uh, looks like classic X-Men, but in the animation style. So also kind of fun. Uh, matter of fact, this looks just like that uh, Art Adams classic X-Men number one cover to me but you know it is what it is but with the x-men 97's team uh what else are we getting oh well marvel is doing it again to us here we go i know i'm not gonna get into my whole spiel i'm not gonna complain complain doom doom second print fine makes sense we're getting a second print on doom it sold very well uh it seems like it's coming a little late like they usually are on top of these things like that but uh doom number one uh second print coming out and obviously, they can't go do without uh, 1 in 25 incentive, which is that cover A, which was the popular cover uh, in a version. So there you go. Early pre-sales. There were a bunch of early pre-sales on this one going anywhere from 60 75 bucks up to $85. And then current listings, 85 90 almost $100. It's pretty expensive for a second print 1 in 25, but... It is what it is. If you want to collect those things, go for it. I still don't like them, but that's just me. And despite the fact that I don't like them, they keep making them. And uh, a lot of you do like them, and a lot of you are spending money on it. And then, hence why we keep getting them. So Ghost Spider, Spider-Gwen the Ghost Spider number one is also getting the same treatment with a second print, as well as a second print one in 25, which is a virgin version of the uh, Brooks cover in this case. Uh, not a lot of movement on this one, but there was an early pre-sale for about 30 bucks. And then the actual listings right now, they only, they want 90 to $115 for this. Seems like fishing prices to me, but hey, stranger things have happened with some of these second print incentives. People pay some crazy prices in my mind, what I consider pretty crazy prices. Cause the whole idea to me behind the second print is so people can catch up and read them. And then when you incentivize them by putting these variants, it, it just doesn't feel right. And it's just kind of false rarity. And I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Just not into it. That's all. Just not into it. But if you want to go and collect them, God bless you. It just might cost you. Just might cost you. Facsimiles are handled the same way. And I'm just getting kind of bothering me too. But DC is at least just giving us the uh, facsimile of the regular cover here of the first appearance of uh, Nightwing's outfit there at the, the Judas contract start, or actually not start, but part three uh, with Teen Titans 44. There's also a blank sketch cover. And for whatever reason, they give you a foil option as well. So if you want to pay two more dollars and get a shiny foil cover on it, you can. Uh, not to be outdone, Marvel wanted to do the same thing. So they're giving you another shot at Deadpool 1 which is actually kind of the start of the Deadpool we all kind of know and love because the original Deadpool, Mark with a mouth, he wasn't as funny or fourth wall breaking as you might remember. Liefeld, he was just a knockoff of Deathstroke. That's really all he was before. And his jokes were not funny. Uh, but as soon as we got this series started, um, this is more the character we know. So there is a facsimile for this issue as well as a foil version because people love foil versions these days and of course we need an incentive with different cover art and uh, yeah so we have this not a bad cover i just don't like the idea of changing the cover art on a facsimile cover it's not a facsimile anymore but whatever this thing selling pretty well uh early pre-sales about 50 bucks asking prices 65 80 up to $125. That's a uh, pretty steep prices there for, again, a 1 in 25 on a reprint. 
but it is what it is. And uh, that's the market we're all living in right now. So not surprised, but a little surprised, I guess. With that said, this week, it's back. The reading pile, my reading list is back. Uh, and there's a bunch of stuff here that I'm going to have to catch up to read. Not even counting the stuff we've already covered. This is more stuff. As I said, it's going to be a rough week on the old wallet. Get Fury number three. Just just like this kind of stuff. I like Ennis doing a good old war story. You mix in the fact that it's Punisher and Nick Fury, I'm in. So I want to see where issue three goes. And it's max and it's explicit. I'm in. No other covers. Just one option for you. Love that too. Just give me the one issue. Just want to read it. See where this story's going. Ghost Rider is wrapping up. So our final vengeance here with Hood and Spirit of Vengeance. We'll see how this all plays out. Is the Hood going to stay the Spirit of Vengeance? I don't know. We'll see. But Final Vengeance, Issue 5 is coming out this week. A uh, couple of covers on that one. I think we got another one coming in a later segment. But uh, we have these options here for now with an A and a B. Uh, switching over to Dark Horse and uh, Critical Role. I love this stuff here, too. So Vox Machina, can't wait for the show to come back. It's awesome. Uh, but Series 4, Issue 2 for the comics is coming out. Uh, so they're coming out with a new volume. And then we do have The Tales of Exandria, also uh, Issue 4, coming out this week as well. So, again, if you like this kind of stuff, this D&D stuff like I do, there you go. we got two new issues coming out this week. I haven't loved this next pick, but I just got to finish the series at this point. Been going along through it. It's been all right. It, is, it was interesting start. Follow-up was a little, eh. But at this point, just got to finish it up. So issue four of Golgotha Motor Mountain, uh, if I said it right, two covers here. I dig this, the B cover uh, here as well because I love the you know the trade dress with the Japanese style writing. I like it. I don't know. It's kind of fun. And plus, it looks like a little bit like a previews. I don't know. But there are your two covers if you want to get this issue as well. Uh, I think this was supposed to come out last week, but I think it's coming out this week. Uh, and that's Savage Dragon. So Savage Dragon 271, Eric Larson. So look who's stopping by. Yeah, I guess since he, he's technically uh, public domain, I guess. There we go. Mickey Mouse showing up wherever he pleases. Uh, but Savage Dragon 271. And then you get the retro trade dress version too, if you want that on the B cover. So uh, yeah, I've been getting these. I haven't been reading savage dragon forever but i just keep getting these as part of my like monthly pull list for forever now it seems i think since issue like at least issue 200 not for the start i don't have the full full run there was a stretch where i wasn't getting this but i just keep getting this title for a while even though it's been forever since i've actually read it i'm, I'm just honest i'm just being honest but yeah uh, been getting these retro covers uh too so anyway Another thing that's in the technical reading pile here is uh, the Whisper Queen. So this is again the this is the wrap up to the mini series following up on that uh, the White Trees series. Uh, so Chip Zdarsky, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Again, sword and sorcery fantasy type things. So uh, this is wrapping up the Whisper Queen storyline, uh, and you've got two covers on this one as well. So pick the one that you like. We are also getting the next installment of Geiger with issue four, Ghost Machine again. Loving what they're doing with Ghost Machine 2. Digging the universe so far. Uh, I'm glad they haven't expanded it just yet. I feel like we might be getting an expansion soon. But so far, I'm liking just Geiger and Rook and Redcoat and uh, just keeping it simple. Uh, I can keep up with that. We'll see what happens when they start to build out from, from there. But A cover as well, just like the others. A cover and a B cover. And then there is a 1 in 50 uh, foil incentive uh, as well. So. Again, nothing doing on the uh, aftermarket or pre-sale market, I should say. So uh, if you want to get one of these, you generally can for less than ratio. So if you want to get the shiny foil version, you can. Uh, issue two of Falling in Love on the Path to Hell is coming out. I'm looking forward to this. I like issue one, so looking forward to issue two. Only one cover here, as well as an incentive. One in 15. It's not as impressive as the one in 10 was on the first issue but keep an eye out for this thing keep an eye on it because i've only noticed one pre-sale so far on this one in 15 and it sold for only 12 bucks but there's none listed so don't know what the kind of a volume will be on a book like this but if the storyline continues to be good and people continue enjoying the story they will start going back and looking for these other books and variants so something to keep an eye on just like 
Precious Metal. So Precious Metal is uh, in the world of Little Bird. I dug that series as well. Uh, I haven't read Precious Metal 1 yet. I, I meant to, but I'm going to because I like Little Bird a lot. So I'm going to catch up. It's just, again, there's a lot of books to read. So I fall behind here and there. So I will admit I've fallen behind uh, or not fallen behind. I didn't start Precious Metal yet, but I'm going to read these two probably together this week. Uh, but we have cover A here as well as a 1 in 25, which is a pretty solid Peach Momoko. I know she gets a lot of flack from a lot of people, but she does make some really nice covers. And I like this one. So this is another one to keep an eye on uh, because, again, it's a uh, indie title. Pretty uh, steep incentive to have an issue, too, to have it be a 1 in 25. I mean, this isn't like uh, Transformers or G.I. Joe. This is a smaller property. So a lot of people might not be ordering to get this, but there might be enough readers out there who want to take a look at this. So no pre-sales so far, and there's only one listed, and it's looking for uh, 70 bucks, which is a pretty healthy premium on that 1 in 25. So something to keep an eye on just like this next book which i can't wait because i've been like i've been digging first two issues but issue three ain't no grave coming out scotty young or hey corona I like the art i like the story i like the cover here and there is a one in 25 on this one as well and it's already trading at a premium as you might guess because it is scotty young drawing a scotty young cover on his own the written title uh issue two uh, did pretty well, so surprise. Not surprised to see issue three having uh, decent pre-sale uh, numbers here. As far as early pre-sale price of about fifty bucks, double it up on the ratio. But the asking price is even at like Midtown. This was asking like sixty, seventy bucks at the jump. So sixty-three dollars up to ninety dollars for this issue three, uh, one in twenty-five. I like it, and I love when he does these like scenes as covers more so than just like the pins where it's just a character posing. I like it when it's a little scene, so it's kind of fun. A little go fish instead of, you know, poker that you would expect from the Old West. But liking this series and uh, liking these covers, I just, I don't think I can get the Scotty Young. I'll just be fine with the uh, regular cover because, I like I said, can't wait to read the, can't wait to read this one. This week, with this large of a reading pile, I had to separate a section of it out. Because, to be honest... I don't love all of this stuff, but OCD and my uh, the collector inside me makes me get some of this. So I just got to do it. So I'm starting a new little short se short segment here. Just got to do it. And again, I'm not loving the current Spider-Man storyline, but I just got to do it. So I just got to get my Spider-Man. I, I just got to keep doing it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they're printing at this point. I'm probably going to buy it. So my ASM run continues on. So, Amazing Spider-Man 53 with the Spider Goblin. It's like I said, I'm just not that into it. So, just waiting for another, the next Spider-Man series to end. Just like Gang War before it and whatever was before that. Just, just hoping to have good Spidey again. But for now, I'm going to grind. I'm going to grind through it. So, we have a cover A. We have a uh, Delato cover. And we have the uh, What If you know, uh, Disney cover here as well. And then we have incentives. If you want incentives, including a virgin version of the Delato, it's a one in 50, a black and white version of the Disney. That's the one in 100. And then there's a one in 25 Dodderman that, uh, again, has a whole bunch of Spideys on it. Don't sleep on it. Cause you know how those other Dodderman covers are done. Granted, Peter Parker is not a sexy female. So, uh, this may not do as well as the rogue on Excalibur or the Psylocke or Scarlet, Witch, etc. but still Dodderman doing the, uh, multiple versions of the characters and the costumes and who has more costumes than spider-man not many another book i just got to do it granted i didn't hate the first issue but i didn't quite love it either so i'm just going to grind through it annihilation 2099 issue two now we're being introduced to star lord 2099 uh so yeah and with those introductions, we're getting a cover a and you get throwback uh 2099 cover with the board crazy border on the b and then you get the homage one in 25, which is also pretty fun. So here you go, Star Lord for 2099, homaging that classic Star Lord special edition. Pretty well done again with the homage. I dig it. I like it. Not doing too much, uh, not doing really anything on the pre sale market. It's right around ratio. So if you're interested, you can get this. But this whole run uh, for 2099 Annihilation will have these first appearance homage covers on the one in 25. So, and this seems to be coming out weekly. So like I said, I'm, I'm just grinding through this series. I'm going to let, read it and uh, see where it goes. 
Uh, the next series also didn't love the first issue. So I just got to do it. I just got to keep grinding through it. That's the Ultimates. So we'll see. Ultimates issue two. There is a spoiler cover on this issue too. So there's also a Bradshaw. And then we have this spoiler cover, which I'm going to spoil for you because I've seen it. Uh, it's this. It looks like we're getting, I guess, America in a new suit. So, oh, okay. I could be wrong. Maybe that's not America Chavez. I'm just assuming. I didn't read the book yet. Again, I'm going to get it Wednesday. But this is the spoiler cover. And there is also a 1 in 25 uh, dots in here. So not too bad. Decent cap. But not doing anything on the pre-sale market. So if you want it, ratio or less. Uh, and again, not loving the story. But I just got to do it. Because it's not terrible either. I'm going to just admit it. Air of the Apocalypse. So X-Men Air of the Apocalypse. It's not terrible. It's just not the greatest story in the world. So I just got to keep grinding through it. So issue three, I got to get it. There's another cover later on, but uh, just one for now. With that, we're also getting a bunch. This is probably the longest segment. So I'm going to try to try to get through this quickly. But the longest segment, I'm going to take a drink of water as we get to our new number ones. All right. Uh, let's get through this. All right. So Barfly. There was a Barfly series before this, but we have this uh, from the world of Minor Threats. We're getting this spinning out of it uh, by Patton Oswalt. You know, it's comedy stuff. Barfly. I think there was a series of Barfly before this. Maybe there isn't. Maybe this was just the only one, and it's been coming for a while now. But, yeah. Cover A. You saw it before I covered it up with that huge explanation of what the book is. And then pretty fun variants here. David Mack. Middle finger. Guitar. One in ten as well. So, uh, yeah, get the one that you like. Dark Horse, which seems to be coming out with a ton of uh, just in things now that are just new to them, their own IPs. Another story, Kill All Immortals, which, uh, re going by the synopsis, is uh, John Wick meets the Immortal. Oh, Succession meets John Wick. Uh, never watched Succession. I know. People told me it's great. I just felt like I would have been starting in too late and have to get back to the beginning and don't have the time. I'll get to it eventually. But Succession meets John Wick with Immortal Vikings. Okay. Well, projects that are pretty popular, I'll give it a try. Looks like Kate Blanchett sitting there with an axe. And uh, then there's a B cover here as well. So I don't know if this is going to be like another old guard or uh, something like that, but eh, I'll give it a try. Uh, Hunger. The Hunger in the Dusk, so second volume, book two, is starting up at IDW. So another fantasy sort of storyline. Uh, I remember getting these, but I didn't get around to reading them, but we're getting a volume two. So volume two, number one. Could be good if we're into this sort of thing. Uh, a cover and a B cover as well. I might give this a try again, too, if I can get around to reading that uh, first series. I know I have them around here somewhere. Uh, maybe I'll go and grab this because, yeah, I like that kind of stuff. It's just hard to keep up with all this content we get so much so much content thrown at us these days that it's uh it is really hard to keep up with especially when it comes to the wallet because they throw out books like this which is whopping 12 bucks so teenage mutant ninja turtles 40th anniversary comic celebration they're giving us what seems to be this huge anthology book 11.99 cover price big old explanation look at, i'm not reading all that for you big old synopsis Turtles are turning 40. We know. Turtles are restarting. We know that, too. Why do we need this $12 book? I don't know. Not only that, this book has a lot of covers. You see the cover A? We also got these as well. You got the animation style. You got uh, kind of like the throwback with the all, they're all wearing red bandanas. Um, we've got these ones going back with the, was that Bisley? And then uh, more of the modern look of the characters and then. 40 years. I know. It's a long time. We're not done. There's more. There's more. We've got these other throwbacks here, and we got a movie cover that's not revealed yet, so uh, there is a movie cover of some sort, and then we got a 1 in 10. That's not the only one. There's Last Ronin, too, on that 1 in 10. Uh, and we got a 1 in 25 and a 1 in 50, which looks pretty cool, and a 1 in 100 on a $12 anthology-type book. $12. I don't know a lot of places are going to get the 1 in 100, but if they do, see if you can get it, because right now, it's doing pretty well. Actually, the 1 in 50 is not too bad either, as far as some of the asking prices. But for now, the 1 in 100, early pre-sales, $190 to $200, asking like $190 to 
But again, it's got a $12 start, so I can see it. I can see why it has such a high uh, aftermarket price already for the incentive. Because you can't just do the normal, you know, 1 to 100, because the book costs twice as much as regular books. So it makes sense. With that said, we're also getting this book at an image. Domain, Chip Zdarsky giving us a classic hero like you've never seen before. Uh, this one, three best friends discover a crash UFO. They discover technology, gives them incredible abilities. It's kind of a reading a lot like, uh, what was that story with uh, Michael B. Jordan? Uh, I can't think of the movie. It was like almost like the found footage. I can't think of it. Just drawing a blank. You know what I'm talking about, though. But it sounds like that. Uh, but anyway, the domain. Here you go. If you want to give it a try, only two covers. You got a cover A, and then you have a cover B here as well that has almost like a magic card or like a like a D and D uh, D and D card or or sheet uh, for the character. So kind of fun. Rick and Morty apparently tenth anniversary special. Doesn't feel like it's been that long, but yeah, tenth anniversary special. So Rick and Morty, a couple of covers here, uh, and you know A's, B's, and C's. I guess D's. Uh, four covers. Pick the one that you like. No incentive. And then we'll move on to Gotcha Man. So we're getting the bad guy Galactor. Uh, is getting a mini. Four issues. A couple of covers here. Uh, and again, that's ba that's the, the gist of it. I mean, if you want to read this, you can pause it and read the little synopsis. But that's the gist. It's the bad guy getting a mini. And he's got a couple of covers here with an A cover and a B cover, as well as a 1 in 10 incentive. Not really doing all that much. Eh, 10 to 12 bucks, basically. It's not uh, as striking, I guess, as the princess cover that was on issue one of the regular Gotcha Man, but it is the bad guy. So, you know, keep an eye on it. DC giving us a new number one with Task Force 7, I guess. Yeah, and yeah, absolute power. I can't, I'm just not, it's not really feeling like I'm into it. It's not really feeling like I'm into it. Amanda Waller and the robots. But here we go. We're getting uh, evil forces, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of covers. A lot of covers. A's, uh, B's, and C's. Uh, the Repose is pretty cool over there with the Amazo version of Superman, I guess. Uh, and then we got the Adam, the Marvel family. Uh, there's a plat uh, right there in the middle, even though I know Superman's supposed to look beat up, but it's still a little wonky. Face is a little bit wonky. Like the eyes, they're a little off. And I get the Superman's beat up, but I feel like his head got bashed in to the point where it's, he's looking a little more like sloth. And uh, there's a foil uh, foil cover in there as well. No incentives. So you can get any of the covers that you like here uh, for your Task Force 7, number one. Uh, and then we're getting Robin Lives. So going back to Death in the Family, going back from the DC vault, uh, they're telling the story of if the fans had voted the other way and Robin was not killed. Basically, Jason Todd lives. What's next for the fallen Robin? Yada, yada. So you get it. Um, one and four. Issue one and four. So it's four issue mini. Two covers. Uh, regular open order. You got that one. And you got the Mignola. Mignola. I can't remember if I'm saying it right. And then there is a one in 25, which is a black and white of that B cover. So pretty cool there. Also, not doing uh, too bad already. So keep an eye out for this one. Uh, if your shop gets one, because early pre-sales. Well, yeah. One sold for 10 bucks. One did sell for 32 as well. Asking prices are starting to seek a little bit more, though. They're looking for 30 to 40 bucks before release for this one in 25, which doesn't mean they're going to get it. Just saying, keep an eye on it. See what happens. If you can get it cheap enough at your shop, and you might be able to do well come Wednesday. Uh, that Primer series has a, fo a follow-up series, Clashing Colors. Issue 103 coming out. Only one cover. Uh, yeah. We talked about this before. It was like a started, I think it's a graphic novel, and they sold it as floppy covers for the first volume, and this is the second volume of the, the series. They're doing the same kind of thing. Uh, Star Wars also giving us the Ahsoka in comic form because I guess they really, really hate Boba Fett. I'm going to doing that just to bug my buddy Dom. Yet yeah, they've adapted all of the shows except for Book of Boba Fett, which I will admit I'm pretty happy about. But that all said, Ahsoka is getting adapted here with David Nakayama cover on cover A. And as you might expect, we are getting a lot of other options as well. So you got Morgan Elsbeth there. You got a Jabba cover for the uh, 25th anniversary of Phantom Menace. Remembering our favorite pod scene race with Jabba and his 
luxury box. <sighs> and, and then, okay, then we'll move on. And we've got a little throwback there to uh, Sabine with the long-haired Sabine uh, riding her cycle. We've got an action figure cover. We've got an uh, AKA cover there in the middle, which is pretty awesome. Uh, one of my favorites of the week. And also a foil version done by uh, Ken Lashley, which is uh, also pretty good. Then there are some incentives as well from a design cover on the one in 10 um, movie. So we got Rosario Dawson. Uh, I want to say movie, but you know what I mean? Film version, whatever you want to call it. Live action, one in 25 there. Pretty awesome. And then the virgin on that uh, AKA cover, Aka, uh, I guess AKA, I don't know. Uh, one in 100. Again, gorgeous, gorgeous cover and doing all right. So not doing a ton, even though it's a Star Wars one in 100. It is worth keeping an eye on because it's one of those books that could pop. Or it could just kind of hang around where it is. Right now, 100 to 125 Early pre-sales, asking prices, 120 up to as high as 190 So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, we got another installment in the Marvel vs. Avengers variants. Only one. We had one last week. And we've got one this week. And this week, we have Amazing Spider-Man. So Amazing Spider-Man 53 gives us this Spidey fighting aliens which is pretty cool. And as I showed you last week, not many of these coming. We'll have one next week, which will be Phoenix. And then, you know, uh, one more the week after. And then we got to wait a couple weeks into August for that last one. But yeah, so there's the rundown of what to expect for these Marvel aliens variants. Stormbreaker covers this month are doing those Wolverine versus Deadpool because of Wolverine versus Deadpool coming out later this month. We got here classic throwback to the after Jim Lee. So you can see, I like it when they, they credit credit the original art. Granted, it's nowhere close to the original Jim Lee art, but this is uh, Wolverine being tripped by Deadpool, so it is kind of a fun angle on it. This is on Avengers number 16 uh, for this one. And then uh, we have this Wolverine jumping out of a plane uh, or getting kicked out of a plane with the wrong backpack, which has looks like almost like Turtles gear out of it. I mean, there's nunchucks and pizzas, but uh, also a goldfish. I guess it's Police Academy reference, maybe. That said, this is on the Airdo Apocalypse number three. So if you want this uh, Stormbreaker cover, you can get that one there. Because we're not getting enough Deadpool this month, in the month of July, we also have the Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe variants as well. And this week, we have four. Last week, we had three. This week, we have four more. I'll do a short on these as well. You guys can check that out on the channel later. Or tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, I think. Uh, but... On the Avengers title, we've got this one with uh, Deadpool fighting Black Panther. Pretty fun. Done by uh, Chad Harden. Uh, and then we have this one, throwback to uh, Bullseye and Elektra on Daredevil number 11. Also, not bad. Ghost Rider getting uh, the extinguisher put to his head on Ghost Rider Final Vengeance. At least they're matching these up. Uh, and then Spider-Boy, which I don't get this one of how this is uh, Deadpool killing the Marvel Universe, but... I guess it's because Spider Boy's a little boy. They don't want to have that. But here you go. Deadpool playing video games with uh, Spider Boy. Uh, the other variant of the month, I guess, is the DC side of things, is their spotlight on Luis, Lu Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, who was doing like those design covers. Uh, last week we had what? Shazam and Batman, I believe. This week we just have Green Lantern. And if I'm understanding it, doesn't look like it's a wraparound. It looks like it's just sideways. So I'm just going to turn it on its side so we can look at it more clearly. But yeah, it's Hal, um, you know, in the design style. So it looks like one of those, uh, you know, gaming or uh, encyclopedias about characters. So they show you all the different looks of the character. I don't know. Not bad. But we do have some covers that I like. We're almost done. We're actually almost done, even though I had a lot to talk about. Kind of been speeding through it because I'm losing my voice a little bit. But I got some covers that I like. A couple of randos. Nothing to these except for the fact they just caught my eye. Batman and Robin number 11. Batman and Robin with a dinosaur. Granted, there's a couple of other covers here where they have the dinosaur too because that's part of the story. They're going to Dinosaur Island. Just something about this one I thought was fun. Then you got Robin. Look, he's going to take a picture. Big old T-Rex looking down on him. And then, if you can't tell by my shirt, Shogun Warriors, you you give me a kaiju-sized mech leopardon on a cover. I'm in. So I know, I think he's on the, in the back of the regular cover on the cover A. There's a small picture of leopardon, but this gives leopardon more of a spotlight on the cover. So Spider-Boy number nine, 
Leopardon cover. Yeah, like I said, I like it. Trivon Warriors. That's what it reminds me of, though. That's what I'm going to get it for. There are a few incentives here we can look at, too. Not like a lot that are, are like really doing much on the market, because we already talked about some of the books that are already kind of spiking a little bit early on the market, like the Ain't No Grave, uh, et cetera. But here are just some things that just kind of stood out to me. So 1 in 25 on Action Comics 1067, following up with the logo cover, that lo logo, Lobo cover that did well already. This doesn't have the same uh, cachet as that, but Superman, classic. Yes, his face is shadowed out, but there's still something like iconic feeling about this cover. I just kind of like it. Granted, you can get this for 10 bucks. This is 1 in 25. You can get for well under ratio. I'm not saying it's going to get hot or it's going to be worth a lot of money. Most likely it is not. And it's probably only worth the 10 bucks that it's costing right now, but it is only like 10 bucks. Same thing here with this Batman Echoes number three. I like a good, like, well, like a, I don't want to say layout, but like a cityscape. Like, yeah, Batman's really, really tiny, but I dig it. I like this layout with the whole city looking immense and huge and ominous, and then a little Batman swinging in there. I just think it's a cool cover. Once again, not selling for anything, it's just a cover I like. 1 in 25 incentive there on that Batman Echoes number 3. Also a 1 in 25 on Gotham by Gaslight. We got uh, Talia al Ghul coming out of uh, looks like a Lazarus Pit, which is also kind of cool. Surprisingly not doing anything either. But if anything was to do a little bit above ratio, just because it's Talia, it, I, I would say it would be this one. But no, not doing anything. So if you also like it, you know, you can probably get it for ratio or less. Most likely less. And I joked before about the Cult of the Lamb not being in the deck because I didn't think it was in the deck, but I forgot. We got to look at the incentive. Not this one, because this is the one in 30, which does have the trade dress, which it's not that it's a bad thing. It's just that there's a higher one. I just wanted to show you this one because it shows you the trade dress. The one in 50 is a virgin version. And this one could go for a bit more. I mean, the first time the issue 1 100, the Stan Sakai, did very well. So we'll see if this does anything. But right now, no pre-sales. Asking prices are right at ratio and a little bit more, 50 to 60 bucks. We'll see. I don't know how many fans there are of this this project, this uh, this IP, but to me, it's worth keeping an eye on at least. And then finally, I think this is our last segment before I, my voice goes on me completely. Cheesecake covers. Let me get some more water before we get this. All right, cheesecake covers. So a few options here. Uh, starting off with a couple of DCs, nothing like over overdone or too much in your face, but we got this Villa Lobos cover here on action. Uh, 1067. It's not bad. Pretty good, Lois. I like it. We got a Catwoman as well on that Echoes number three. Classic Michelle Pfeiffer look. Dig it. And probably my favorite cover of the week. This Red Sonia, Empire of the Damned. This is a Middleton. I get it. People go, oh, the hentai cover, whatever. Yeah, there's tentacles, sure. It's just awesome. Like, I don't know. Middleton just showing his range and doing just a little bit different styles. Like, this isn't this isn't like a, a, a painter quality or photo quality. It's a little more uh, animated, I guess you would call it. I don't know. All I know is I like it. I like it. I like the art. I like the expression on her face. I think it's a cool cover. There are a couple others options, other options as well. You got a Linzer. Um, then we got a photo cover as well. And then we also have some Vampirillas. There's a lot of Dynamite stuff this week that actually has some really good covers. Uh, and on the cover A's, because here we got awesome Perillo. I mean, I know Perillo doing Vampirella seems easy, but sometimes he hits one like, and this is one, again, I think he hit it on 670. Dig it. There's also a Carla Cohen that's pretty good. Uh, and then we got a couple of other options there with a photo cover there as well. And then there's even a sneaky one in seven that's uh, not too bad here either. So just things to keep an eye on. Uh, and then we got yet another vampirella series but this is the dark reflection series and uh let's get a shannon mayor there uh oh i think it's shannon mayor doing uh the cover a and then we've got some other options here as well uh with a linzer and another perillo again just good stuff this is just well done covers and that's i don't know what else is going on inside i'm gonna admit it i don't, I don't know what's going on inside this title just just some good covers out there that's all uh, and then we got the photo version one as well as uh, well as uh, Ancelotto doing that uh, one on there on the left. And then we can go over to Zenoscope. Also, don't know what's going on on these books, but Grim Fairy Tales, uh, Wonderland, Return of Madness, number one. Uh, so I guess we got an Alice here. 
Lost in Wonderland, and a couple a couple other options here as well, if you are so inclined. Pick your poison. Pick the one you like. And then we get another issue of Gun Honey. And as you might guess, there's a lot of decent covers on this one as well that perfectly fit the cheesecake category that we're in. So here's the cover A. Uh, and then we've got other options for you here. Uh, yeah. How far down can uh, the, the zipper go? I guess all the way. Uh, but yeah. So we got those options as well as a foil one there in the middle. And then you've got uh, a photo cover over there on the side. And then there's some not suitable for work versions as well as a helmeted version on that uh, cover A. So a little different take on that one. And then you've got some uh, poly bagged uh, covers that, uh, you know, have a little bit more naughty bits if you want to buy those as well. And then finally, we have profane number two. Uh, the one in 20 Tula Lote, pretty awesome cover. I like it. Looks like Samuel Jackson standing behind her, but profane number two, one in 20 only found one pre-sale and there's none out there. Granted, it only sold for about ratio, but none out there. This could be a sneaky one this week. A lot of Tula Lote fans. So, uh, keep an eye out for this. If you can find this at your shop, it might do well as the week goes on. You know, once more people start talking about it, it starts, uh, you know, getting more buzz about it. We'll see what happens with this cover. But just want to keep an eye on. That's all. And with that, that's all I got for you this week. And I got it done in under an hour. Whew. Again, not trying to rush through this, not trying to make it faster. Uh, just trying to take it easier on my uh, my voice. Um, I've been sitting here talking by myself for a while now. So with that all said... I would like to thank you for all the support for the channel. Make sure you like, you subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out Whatnot if you haven't checked it out already. And if you could do me a favor, go and check out the toy channel as well. Uh, I would appreciate it. It's, uh, again, it's just in its infancy. We're just getting started. I'm going to do a little bit more and more over the weeks. And I'm not going to neglect the comic channel. going to try to keep doing both as best that I can because, uh, I don't know, I love it all. So that all said, I'll see you all later with some more content. All right.